The shocking last month of actor Matthew Perry's life reveals why he descended into addiction and why those around him have been charged with his death. Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN. A lot of people have been buzzing about the arrests in the case of Matthew Perry's death. Five people have been arrested. Three of them have taken plea deals, according to reports already. The two people who seem to be in the prosecutor's crosshairs are the doctor who administered a lot of the ketamine that ended up in Matthew Perry's body and also supplied a lot of it. And then the woman known as a ketamine queen who allegedly supplied the drugs that killed Matthew Perry. They're the ones facing 120 years and life in prison, respectively. They're the ones who have not, according to reports, taken any plea deals, perhaps never been offered them. They're the ones lawyering up. And this thing is apparently heading to a trial against the two of them. And the key witness against them would be the personal assistant to Matthew Perry. And Matthew Perry's last month on this earth will tell you why those two individuals, the Ketamine Queen and Dr. Placencia, the ones who are targets of prosecutors, but also leaves question of why the assistant was able to get a plea deal. And from a prosecutor's perspective, you often have to make deals with people that are unsavory people who have committed crimes to get to the biggest fish. And the big fish here would be the supplier of the drugs. Uh, I believe that the prosecutors probably looked at the assistant of Matthew Perry as someone who was told to get the drugs, told to inject him, even though he's not a doctor, he's not allowed to inject it. Uh, and this was all at the behest of his his boss, who unfortunately was in the throes of addiction, had substance use disorder, and, you know, when you have someone who has, has brain chemistry has changed because of drugs, you need not to enable them. You need not to supply them with drugs and feed them a drug, feed their addiction. And so the assistant has been charged with crimes, and but according to reports, he's pleading guilty and he will face up to 15 years in prison. He'll be the key witness against the other two. That's why they cut a deal with him. And I suspect he'll get a lot less in the 15 years if he fulfills his commitment to testify honestly and the feds are able to convict Dr. Placencia and the ketamine queen. So here are the dirty details according to the LA Times. The day he died, the friend star asked his personal assistant to inject him with a dose of ketamine at 8.30 a.m. It was the first of three injections the actor would request. Perry's longtime assistant, Kenneth Iwamasa, administered another dose roughly four hours later while the actor watched a movie. 40 minutes later, Perry wanted to get in the hot tub, but he had another request. Shoot me up with a big one, Perry, 54, told Iwamasa, the assistant recalled in a signed plea agreement. Iwamasa filled a syringe with ketamine, gave Perry another injection, and then left to run errands. When he returned, his boss was dead, floating face down in the water. Iwamasa, 59, was one of five people charged in a conspiracy to distribute ketamine, a powerful anesthetic, to Perry. Federal prosecutors allege that Iwamasa worked with two doctors, Mark Chavez and Salvador Placencia, and drug dealers Jasmine Sanga and Eric Fleming to obtain thousands of dollars worth of ketamine for Perry in the month before his death. Now let's take those defendants one at a time. We've talked about the assistant, Iwamasa, who cut a deal. He's going to testify and be the key witness. You know that the defendants who go to trial, Dr. P and the Ketamine Queen, will likely try to eviscerate Iwamasa on cross-examination, saying you took a deal because you tried to save your own hide and the feds knew you were the most guilty, but they wanted to go after our clients. And this is a shady deal, and you're the one who fed him the drugs. You're the one who injected them. You're the one most culpable. That's the kind of stuff they're going to uh, say to Iwamasa. But let's look at Mark Chavez. Mark Chavez is the other doctor involved. He also provided the drugs at a great markup to Iwamasa and Matthew Perry. He worked with Dr. Salvador Placencia, Dr. P. But Chavez is taking a deal, so you can rest assured he's going to testify against Dr. Placencia. Chavez seemed to have 
at least somewhat of a conscience in this. He scolded Dr. Placencia for injecting uh, Matthew Perry in a car. I mean, he was uh, seemed to be kind of surprised at how cavalier Dr. Placencia was in providing the drugs and, and um, administering the drugs. And then Placencia would just leave the drugs with Perry's assistant so that the assistant would then inject Perry, even though you're not supposed to uh, do that. That's against the law. You, you can't let uh, someone who's not even a doctor inject the drugs. And let alone, this Dr. Placencia isn't, doesn't have like a, a medical plan, uh, a plan of action, uh, a, a course of conduct to administer the drugs uh, based on his own sound medical judgment. It was purely about money. At least the allegations are that Dr. Placencia was just in it to make money and didn't care about the patient as much as the almighty dollar. And then you have drug dealers, Jasmine Sanga and Eric Fleming. Jasmine Sanga is the ketamine queen. She was known, apparently, in the Los Angeles area, providing ketamine and other drugs to high-end clients. She seemed to live the high life. She, according to reports, went to big parties, Golden Globes awards. Uh, she was well-known on the scene, and she showed up on at her court hearing after she was arrested in a Nirvana t-shirt, which is kind of interesting. Either she was caught by surprise when she was arrested, or she was just showing some sort of contempt for the court. You know, but uh, then you have Eric Fleming. Eric Fleming is the conduit. Eric Fleming is the acquaintance of Matthew Perry and the assistant who knew the ketamine queen, Jasmine uh, Sangha, and he's the one to put it together. But he also is taking a plea deal. So that leaves Sangha, the ketamine queen, and Dr. Placencia as the big fish who are going to be targeted by prosecutors. And you have three cooperating witnesses. You know, first in, first to win is an adage that defense lawyers like to use. If you can cut the first deal with prosecutors, you're going to get the best deal. And that's one reason why you saw that the assistant, you saw Dr. Mark Chavez, and you saw Eric Fleming cut those deals. And they're going to likely get a lot less than the maximum sentences for their crimes. But uh, hold on to your hats. If you are representing Placencia or the ketamine queen because they're facing the rest of their lives in prison. According to the Los Angeles Times, when clinic doctors refused to increase his dosage, Perry turned to Dr. Placencia, an internist who went by the nickname Dr. P. On September 30th, Placencia sought the help of another doctor, Chavez, who had experience with ketamine. In text messages with Chavez, Placencia pondered how much to charge Perry for the ketamine, writing, I wonder how much this moron will pay. And let's find out, according to an indictment filed in court, not exactly a great bedside manner, right? Not exactly someone who supposedly cares for his patients, because Perry wasn't really a patient. Perry was just a moneymaker to him. Later on, Perry's assistant, Iwamasa, uh, sent a text to Dr. Placencia, found the sweet spot, but trying different places led to running out. Iwamasa texted the doctor, by the afternoon, the need for the drug, ketamine, was urgent. I need some ketamine now. Can I come to you, please? He texted. How many cans are you bringing, and when do you think you'd be here? Iwamasa continued to buy additional vials from the doctor, but he was beginning to look for another source for the illicit drug to keep up the supply. On October 10, Placencia told Chavez he injected Perry with ketamine in a parking lot near the aquarium in Long Beach, according to the plea agreement. Chavez called Placencia to reprimand him for doping people in cars and in a public place where children were present. Yes, this is what I was talking about, that one reason why prosecutors cut the deal with Chavez is because he at least he looked like he was uh, had a, more of a conscience than Placencia. He looked less culpable. He was part of it and is going to face prison time, but he looked like he was less a part of the criminality and was warning Dr. P for being so brazen and injecting Matthew Perry right outside an aquarium where kids are present. Two days later, Perry received a ketamine infusion treatment from a doctor at a clinic. After the treatment, Iwamasa contacted Placencia to buy more ketamine. They met at Perry's home, where the doctor administered a large dose of the actor, which caused his systolic blood pressure to spike and his body to freeze up so severely that he couldn't talk or move, according to court records. Let's not do that again, Placencia told Iwamasa. He left more ketamine for Perry before he departed. So you have a doctor who sees what is happening with these injections. That Matthew Perry froze. He could have died. His heart rate went way up. And although he said, let's not do it again, what did he do? He left more ketamine with Iwamasa. He was getting paid for it. You know, this, is, this, is, uh, this is why he's being prosecuted. Not to mention that he also allegedly tried to 
uh, doctor records. So it looked like he was, you know, a legitimate doctor providing a standard uh, course of treatment for Matthew Perry. When in reality, it was, a, as I said, a money maker, and so he doctored documents. Doctor documents. <laughs> he uh, altered documents, deleted things, uh, a way to try to cover it, his own hide. By mid October, Perry and his assistant had turned to Fleming, an acquaintance of the actors, who all who had a source that could provide the drugs at a lower cost, and that was the ketamine queen. Later on, Fleming delivered another 25 vials to the actor's home along with ketamine lollipops that Sanga had thrown in as a bonus for the large order. In the final days of Perry's life, court records indicate there were signs the actor's addiction was spiraling out of control. Iwamasa was injecting the actor with ketamine six to eight times a day. The aide had found Perry unconscious at his home at least two occasions in October. And this is why some people are wondering if Omasa perhaps should have been charged more severely. But again, if you are going to identify who the source of the drugs are, the only way you'll know which specific batch of drugs killed Matthew Perry would be Iwamasa because it was, it was Iwamasa who bought it, paid for it, and got it and then administered the drugs. He would know that it is the ketamine queen's drugs. And that's why she's facing up to life in prison. Without him, you don't have as strong of a case against Sangha or Placencia, for that matter. That's why they're cutting a deal with him, even though you have this assistant who keeps injecting Perry six to eight times a day, who's finding him unconscious and continuing to do this. Even if your boss is telling you to keep doing it, even if he's in the a spiraling throes of addiction, you don't do it. Obviously, you don't do it. But prosecutors apparently thought that he was the most important witness, and because he was following orders, he was less culpable than the ones who were just making bank off it. After Iwamasa found Perry dead in the hot tub on October 28th, he disposed of the ketamine bottles and syringes and deleted everything related to the drug deaths. He later told Fleming, Sanga immediately deleted her text messages with Fleming from uh, Signal, an encrypted messaging app, and told him to do the same. After speaking with Iwamasa, Fleming texted Sanga to reassure her, I'm 90% sure everyone is protected, he wrote. I never dealt with Perry, only his assistant. So the assistant was the enabler. Also, they are doing a three-month tox screening. He ended his text with a question. Does K stay in your system, or is it immediately flushed out? Yeah. So let's just say Fleming was wrong that he's protected and everyone else is protected. They're all going to face accountability for their actions, some more than others. And we'll keep following it here on True Crime MTN. Thank you for watching. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. The Florida Lawman. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. We're over 53,000 subscribers now because of supporters like you. Share with a friend and leave a comment below. I love reading your comments, even when you disagree with me. And I'll see you next time.